liposomes as potential biolubricant agents for friction and wear reduction in cartilage of human synovial joints. Okay. And I'll be particularly interested in this because my PhD thesis was on hyaluronic acid. Really? Yeah. That's as awesome. a okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the world is too small. You yeah. know, that's always surprising me how small is the world. So if you keep to the 20 minutes. Okay, yeah. Where is the... This one, okay. Okay, so this is a completely different uh, subject from what I told you before. But again, it's, it's related to nanotechnology. It's collaboration with a tribologist. Tri tribology is a field, uh, the science of friction, actually. So this guy is really dealing with machines uh, and friction. And, and uh, actually, we start to collaborate on this project a few years ago. And, uh, and the reasons uh, that uh, it was done is because there is a, a very large problem that uh, people at my age and others are very well aware of it. And this is uh, cartilage destruction due to wear, which I wrote with a, with a typo here. Uh, due to uh, increased fri friction, the wear is become faster. This leads to pain and inflammation. And, and, uh, and, and uh, to a d disease that's called osteoarthritis, that it's probably the most uh, frequent disease in the Western world. Uh, and, and I think quite large percentage, 2% of the, of the people in the, in the world suffer from this. And if we look carefully at the disease, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really very, in a very simple way, We can see here, this is a normal uh, knee, a normal joint. And we can see these are the bones, they are cartilage here. And this cartilage actually helps the, the smooth motion. It's almost a frictionless. It's amazing how effic uh, efficient lubricant, lubricants we have here in the synovial fluid that really protect the, the, <coughs> the cartilage. And for many reasons, it starts going wrong. We start having uh, initial stages of damages. Cartilage starts to be destructed. We expose some brain. We get a, a, a bad friction. This will lead later to inflammation, con complete destruction of the cartilage. And people start having really severe pain. It becomes very, very difficult to move, and so on. It's not only to the knees. It's happening in the fingers and many other places. So the you know, it's one of the, treat, one of the diseases or, 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 or pathological situations that there are no definite drug to it. So you can start with something like painkiller that will help the pain but really not do anything to the, to the disease itself. You can start with, with, cortic, with corticosteroids that really will help, again, in reducing the inflammation in case it is done. It's oral but has quite a lot of side effects. Or you can go to a, a more recent drug. This is the hyaluronic acid uh, that uh, is, is uh, now uh, uh, quite in increasing in sales. And every one of them is doing differently. You can see hyaluronic acid. People believe, and there are no really strong proof for it, but people believe that it works on the viscosity level. It's, it's obvious today that it's not a lubricant, uh, what people thought in the beginning. We came with the idea based on some previous data of other people that lipids that are actually present in the synovial fluid and actually the level go down dramatically in case of osteoarthritis may act as a, as a very good lubricant and, uh, and, and the mechanism is a boundary lubrication. So this actually what we want to develop, develop is a liposomal uh, preparation that can do G this uh, effect that can reduce in reduce friction and reduce the wear of the cartilage. Well, this just tells you how many people suffer and so on. It's a really serious disease. Let's leave it. And, and this already I told you, in case that it goes to extreme, you have to do a surgery, a hip replacement, and so on. But you have all other alternatives before, started with OTC and going throughout all the drugs that we discussed. Now, there are 
a lot of studies were done with uh, hyaluronic acid, and then very recently a five very elaborate meta-analysis that really uh, contain a lot, a lot of study were done, in a, all were done doubly, double blinded studies, and the bottom line that the system helps, but it's not very efficient, and it's def definitely not a, 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 a something that will cure the disease. I have to say that HA was, hyaluronic acid was approved as a medical device because it doesn't interact chemically with the cartilage, neither with the bone, and it really have a physical effect, that's what the claim, as, as, uh, as uh, something that changed the viscosity. It was accepted by the FDA and by the EMEA as a medical device, and, and that's the way it's going. Now there are about six, seven companies that are producing it, and the total market in the world is coming close to a one billion dollar, which is quite big. And if it will be more efficacious, it will be much larger. This chart shows you this number. These are the different preparations. Genzyme was the first. Now there are many more companies, and there are companies that actually are not included in the list. So we decided to really try to see the phospholipid, and since we believe that liposomes are the best way to deliver phospholipid, we tried to use it. But before us, an Australian uh, MD-PhD by the name of Hills, he, he died, unfortunately, three years ago. He, he decided to take a phospholipid called dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine. I'll show you the lipid later. And put it in a, a propylene glycol, inject it to people after doing all the study first in small animals, then in horses. Just safety, because there is no a good model that you can use. So it's just safety study. He did trial in human. Unfortunately, he died in the middle of the, tri of the trial. But the results are, I would say, reasonably good. Namely, there is some effect there. Not good enough that someone will pick it up, but quite good. So the idea was to try to improve from this point. So again, we take the approach that I showed you before, starting with the performance, what we want to achieve, then look for the properties, structure and processing, and everything done with relevance to trib tribology. And the question is, <coughs> so liposome you already know, I can skip it, but actually in this case, for reasons that I explain later, we did, did not use the small liposome like in the doxyl, but we use rather large, large liposome, and that's for biological reasons that I'll tell you in a minute. So liposome are not toxic, we already talked about it, and, and, and they are biocompatible. We also prove it in animals now, in rabbits and in other animals, in rats, that actually this system are pretty clean from the toxicology point of view. The question is how to evaluate. As I said, the in vivo methods are usually did with extreme cases of that you have a severe pain, that you have a lot of inflammation, and in most of the, most of the cases, this is not the case. In most of the people, this is not the case. We, you, we want to come much earlier than this. So the question, how we can evaluate it? Uh, and, and we found that the in vivo experiment in this case are not going to be informative enough, and also they take a very long time, and, and the results are questionable. And that's agreed by many other people. And the other things that we have to deal with, okay, how we are going to characterize the liposome and can we find some kind of a marker? What I said again is in vitro and vivo correlation, IV, IVC, that this marker in the physical properties will tell us, okay, this is a good preparation and this is not good preparation. How we can select the right lipid? And there are a lot of parameters we, can, we have to look for. It, it's the liposome size, lamellarity, this is the basic, which I even didn't mention here, compressibility, because we're dealing with the lipid. You know the lipid is much more compressible than water, actually. It's, it's amazing in the scale of compressibility. So what we want is high compressibility, low compressibility, how to measure it, what kind of phase we need. Is it be the same LO phase like in doxyl or another phase? What kind of... The lipid can be hydrated or unhydrated. What kind of things will be the best for us? So this is the question we ask. We also have to find the model that can reflect <coughs> the, the biological situation, and uh, we can get answer if we really lower or improve on, the, on both on the wear, reduce the wear, and also reduce the friction. 
and, and we build a system for it. So here, when we deal with the, with the, with the lipid phase, if you remember well, with the doxyl, we look for the whole LO phase. We found here that the whole LO phase doesn't work well. I don't have time to go into detail, but the main reason is that these lipids are packed too, too tight, and also the other reason is that they are not hydrated enough, and I'll go into it later. And the best phase is one single phospholipid or a mixture of two, that is in the liquid disordered phase. Mainly, there is quite high fluidity and very large free volume, which is opposite to what we want in the doxyl. So again, you can see the phase transition of the lipid we use is in this range, 24 to 37 degrees. It have to be below 37 degrees, so the lipid will be in the LD phase. That's a very, very important. Again, we use the multilamellar liposome, which is something like that many lamellas, and they are quite large in the range of few micrometers in size, the nano are not going well. Let's go into the problem. Actually, if we zoom now, you have here a, a this is the, the kind of the hip that we want to look for, the area, uh, and you can see that actually, what if, you, if we now do, doing a zoom, we can see here the bonds, and we can see here the synovial fluid, and there is a membrane that actually protecting the synovial fluid. And this membrane, the synovial membrane, has in them pores in the size of about 200 nanometer, 250 nanometer, people argue. So every particle that will be smaller than 250 will escape very fast from the synovial fluid. So if you have particles which are larger, like the large liposome that we are using, they will stay here much longer. So that's one good reason why we decided to use the large multilamellar liposome. You can see all, this <coughs> all the structure, and I'm not going to elaborate more of this, but this was the point that I want to stress, the size related to the synovial membrane. That's how the experiments are done. We're getting from healthy people that have hip replacement, people that have car accident or they have some other things. We, take, we get the piece of bones with the, from them after getting the Helsinki to get, uh, approval to get, together with the, with the cartilage, and we cut a, a kind of a disk of cartilage, and we connect it to some kind of a system that you will see in a minute. We have an upper part and a lower part. So, okay, th this is the way before we did it for the friction and for the, for the wear, because in the wear we're doing a lot of movement back and forth, like trying to imitate uh, walks of 100 kilometers or 50 kilometers, so we have to do, then we take it together with the bonds and we attach it. So basically it's similar uh, system, but it's done a little bit differently in the practice. And this is the system we are using to measure. So what you have here, you have a water bus. In the water bus, you have a kind of a, <coughs> a for stable stage on which you can, you can attach one of the discs, the larger disc usually, uh, eight millimeter in size. And this is a moving, a, a moving uh, part. To, to the bottom of it, we attach the other, the other disc, which is about four millimeter in size. We can apply different, um, different level of forces here, of any, anything that we want. You can see the numbers in a minute. All this is embedded in a fluid, uh, any fluid we want, of course, aqueous fluid, and, and uh, it can contain the lubricant or without the lubricant, synovial fluid, and other things that we want to do. We can control the temperature. We can take samples all the time and check what is in. And this is the system. And there are two papers that published this year that describe the, the study we did. One of the, this is on the friction, and this is on the wear. So actually, just to show you one experiment, the trace of the paper, this is a friction experiment. So what you do, you, you start moving this. And at the beginning, there is resistance. Then, then you start the, the, it start moves. And here, at this point where it turns, this is the, from here, we can measure the, the friction coefficient, what called the static friction coefficient, uh, coefficient, just because before it start moving. And this is the dynamic while it is in the motion itself. So we get two parameters, the static and the, fr and the, and the dynamic fr uh, friction coefficient which we can get them under many different conditions and many different lubricants and other factors that we have in this system. A very, very uh, easy, very, very simple system. 
And for the, for the uh, well, we're doing exactly the same, except that we do many more motions. And what we do, we measure the amount of small, very small particles that, due to the friction, are really removed from the cartilage. And we can determine them either as collagen or as a proteoglycan. So both are equivalent, and you'll see the data before. The first thing we wanted to know is which liposome to use, which size. And we already knew that the dimeristoil has a phase transition of 24, and we expected it to, to work for us. So we tried it, and we took the large multilamellar liposome and the small unilamellar liposome. We applied them in the system. We, we put some pressure. And then we, could, uh, we took the, the cartilage piece, and we actually, with the microtome, we slice this to small pieces, here, with the, uh, this is the micrometer, and we check the amount of phospholipid of the DMPC that is uh, along the z-axis of the, of the cartilage. And what you can see, that the SUV is going deep inside and nothing stays on the surface, which is here, while the large liposome stays very close to the surface and very little, small, and small, only small fraction of them go deeper. And this small fraction is mainly small amount of small liposomes that are present in the big preparation. So the, they perform very, very differently. The large one remain close to the surface. The small one really go inside the, inside the, the cartilage itself. <coughs> Why it's happened? Because this is the structure of the cartilage. It's actually a kind of a cage composed of collagen fi fiber, proteoglycan, and a water gel. It's a hydrogel. So when you press it, it goes through, and because the particles are very small, they can just escape. And if you put more pressure and wait more time, they will go down, and because the, the membrane below, if you remember, has a hole which is 250 nanometer pore size, all the lipid will not stay here, but disappear and will be effectless, as I'll show you in a minute. This is the composition, by the way, if you want to know it. <clears throat> So these are the data of the, of the friction, the friction coefficient. Uh, uh, we have the static. This is the static, always higher than the dynamic. And you can see very clearly, this is in saline. It's not a good solution. This is in a synovial fluid, normal synovial fluid. It's quite a good lubricant. This is inflamed synovial fluid. It wears, then it is here. And now we can start playing with the different uh, lubricant. You can see that the, the small unilamellar liposome doesn't do us any good. <coughs> you can see it if we take the DMPC with cholesterol, large vesicles, it doesn't do us any good. If we take the DMPC MLV, the large one, uh, D, this is a DPPC MLV, it works better than the synovial fluid, but not good enough. This phase transition is about 40 degrees and so on. And, and you can see here that the DMPC and a mixture of DMPC with some DPPC are working the best. Quite a dramatic change in the friction coefficient. Actually, it's a very, very efficient. If, if I put it here, HA, which we did, and I didn't like to put it here, because I'm always afraid of argument that I didn't do it on the right condition and so on, you can find that the HA is, is, is doing a little bit, not much, be, actually worse than the DPPC even in the optimal amount. So that's what I told you. We could, we, then we tried to look for the wear, and the wear is much more complicated issue. How to measure it? Can we look at change of morphology? We tried, but it was impossible to quantify it. Uh, we know that wear is increases with increasing normal load and, and with the test duration. The more you walk, the more wear you see. I have to say that all the wear that we see is less than 2%, less than 1%, very, very small. The, the cartilage is a very, very robust tissue, so the wear is, is really small. So, uh, <coughs> so basically, we decided to follow the collagen and the proteoglycan through the amount that is uh, actually shaded into the solution, and that's what we did, and I'll show you some of the data. We apply a, a huge kind of a spectrum of pressure from 0 to 60 Newton, and, and a walk from, a, from a, a 0 to 50 kilometers in this trial. And we did the analysis, and you can see the data now. <coughs> <coughs> so, 
So this is just showing you that it's going up with time, okay? It's going up with pressure. These are three different pressure going up with pressure. And the same data obtained if you measure uh, the potoglycan, except that the zero time is much cleaner, and with collagen that you measure. Actually, collagen was considered before as, as the method of choice, and we proved that collagen is as good and actually better because the, the, the signal to noise here is much better than it is here. So, okay, we, can, we demonstrate that we have both good proof for the, for a, a, as a lubricant, a, as a good lubricant, as, as a wear reducer, and that was the objective that we're trying to do. Here we can see <coughs> now the data on the wear, and again, you can see this is the inflamed SF, the wear and the inflamed. Again, saline is quite, quite bad. And you can see here that our DMPC and DMPC mixture are the best in the effect of the wear. They reduce the wear quite dramatically. So these are, these are the conclusions that I told you now. And now we have to do some animal study to show tolerability and pharmacokinetics. As we don't trust the, the model of the disease, but at least to show that if we inject it, it will stay there for long, long, long enough time so we don't inject every day. It's impossible. And the question, how frequently you have to do it? Once a week, it's not acceptable. Once in two weeks, a little bit more. Once in a month, it's acceptable. Uh, HA is injected every two weeks, every four weeks, depending on the preparation. So we have an example we can follow. <coughs> now, what, what's the mechanism of it? So the mechanism, we believe, is the following. The, the liposome, they, they really pressed on the surface. And because of this, we apply quite high pressure. Because of this, and because they are in a liquid uh, disordered phase, they can delaminate. They form lamellas, which actually cover the surface. And most of the lipid remains as a reservoir. Now, what we have, the question is what happened next? Do we have an hydrophobic lubrication like you have in your car, the oil, what the oil is doing to your car? And this will be then the friction plane. Now, this is wrong. Thermodynamically, it cannot be because all this is exposed to water. And hydrophobic regions cannot expose to water because of the second law of thermodynamics. So we have to assume another model. <coughs> I'm finishing, yeah. <coughs> And this is actually <coughs> the model that each, each of the cartilage sides, each, if the, each of the cartilage surfaces, is getting coated with a bilayer of lipid by this mechanism. And in between this, there is a lot of water. And this water are responsible for the low friction that we get. Because the water acts like, a, like a nano bearing balls. On this, there is a good sliding that can happen. And this theory was developed by Jacob Klein in the Weizmann Institute for other systems altogether. We just apply, apply it here to the, to, the, to the cartilage situation. We have a lot of water bound. You can see every head group has in the first later, uh, layer 10 to 12 water molecules that are strongly attached. And they really can move together with the head group without dissociate. And they are the ones that allow the good friction, the low friction of the system. So. We have a IP on this, this needless to say, and uh, we, we did a toxicology. We show also that, the, that even after 28 days, we still have more than 1% at the injection site attached to, this, to, the, to the cartilage, which is a, a very large amount. And because of this, we expect that this effect will remain for a very long time, although we have to prove it. This just shows what I told you, that a lot is remain on the site. <clears throat> and this shows you that actually toxic, the toxicology profile of the product is, is pretty good. And, and I think let's, this is our development program. And of course, all the work done by, by quite many people, not as much as the Doxil, because we are at a much early stage. So you can see the people in blue are the people that are students and postdocs that have the major contribution to the field. And, and Gabi is the one that did uh, his thesis on the, on the wear, and these people work on the, on the aspect of the friction. And, and, and based on this, we established a, a, a
kind of a small start startup that really now planning and doing the big toxicology and the and aim to the clinical trial. And I like to thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for one question. Well, that talk reminded me of my hyaluronic acid days, going to the slaughterhouse and collecting synovial fluid from. Now you can buy it for nothing. <laughs> oh, for not for nothing. Thank you for that. Okay. Okay.